Hi everybody, old guy here, and the novel today is this one, Stop at a Winner by R.F. Delderfield. Now, Delderfield is one of those um, English constants, you know, like uh, Chesterton or De Maurier. Uh, you know the book is going to be a decent read, even if the subject matter is a tad remote. I admit to not having read a lot of uh, Delderfield stuff. I think the last thing I did, I read, was uh, God is an Englishman, which was decent enough, but again, a tad remote. This, though... <laughs> was right on target, uh, made me laugh out loud at portions. Okay, so what is this book about? Well, Peddler Pasco and Horace Pope are a pair of sad sack, Gomer Pyle, Sergeant Bilko types conscripted into the RAF at the beginning of World War II. The British could not have located two more persons incompatible with military life than them. Pasco is a giant-sized gypsy raised on larceny, a seemingly mental defective who is actually sharper than everyone else in the entire chain of command and who uses the perception of his slowness to his advantage. Pope is simply larcenous. A man who finds casual cons and theft better than working for a living, and he fortuitously falls in with Pasco during their induction. Knowing he needs someone of great strength and size to protect him during his various cons of fellow RAF members and civilians, he latches onto Pasco and so begins a seven year Laurel and Hardy. Butch Cassidy and the Sundance Kid relationship that takes them across wartime England and Europe, inadvertently ending up heroes. Picaresque, yes, that's the word. This is a Henry Fielding novel as our two anti-heroes fall into one situation after another usually involving various black market schemes of varying success at the expense of RAF supplies. Criminality, in other words, but the raging incompetence of the various RAF sergeants and officers and supply depots invites it, um, downright demands it. And that's the funniest part of this novel. Uh, Delderfield's dead-on description of time-honored and proven military incompetence, uh, such as, you know, here, this, here's a line that I pulled from uh, the book. It goes like this. The camp should, of course, have been closed down and left derelict, but nobody at the Air Ministry had remembered to give the necessary orders, so it continued to exist as a kind of ghost camp. It was now used as a depot for unwanted packing cases. It might as just as well have stocked chain mail or arrowheads. Um, and then there's another one. Uh, it, it took a long time to explain to each man individually that the notice outside did not mean what it appeared to mean and that there were, in fact, no vacancies at all in any trade in the RAF at that particular moment of history. The notice had only meant what it said when it was put there, and that since then no one employed at the recruiting post had received orders to take it down or change it in any way. Any of you who have served in the military will be overwhelmed by deja vu and the sense that your shared experience is universal and timeless. Any of you who never did serve, please understand that things get done in the military primarily by a combination of inertia and accident. And I mean the good inertia, you know, the body in motion that tends to stay in motion. 
so that when your youngster enters the recruiter's office, the continuous movement of wheels will ensure he comes out the other end uh, trained and trim and ready. For what? Well, <laughs> a series of incomprehensible and baffling events that we sum up with such phrases as hurry up and wait, uh, BFO, brilliant flash of the obvious, and the now infamous snafu, or our actual favorite, Bohica. You have to look that one up. And there will be several Pascos and Popes along the way to make your kids' lives interesting. Don't worry, everything will be fine. Old guy here, see you later. Mm -hmm.